Hi, everybody. Welcome to VetNet. Uh, my name is Brian Iglesias. I'm a Marine veteran and a film producer. And uh, real quick about VetNet. So VetNet is a it's a new it's a new resource sponsored by Google, um, hosted with some of YouTube technology. And basically, VetNet is a resource place where veterans can go find career advice uh, for their transition to the civilian workplace. Uh, for example, if you want to learn about doing a resume or you want to meet different veterans in industries and talk to them about, let's say, I want to go work in manufacturing or I want to work in the automotive industry or I want to be marketing or sales, whatever it is, it's a place where you can meet other veterans in those industries, talk to them, work on your resume. Uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur and start your own business, they have business classes. Uh, it's a great resource all in one place. It's all recorded so you can go back to it. Uh, if you miss it, you can catch back up. Uh, it's pretty awesome. So all the details are on uh, the, the website. I encourage you all to check it out. It's called VetNet HQ, so V-E-T-N-E-T-H-Q.com. It's about you know, how the storytelling process across all mediums, so it's graphic novels, comic books, novels, um, they can help a veteran transition, whether it's through, you know, emotionally transition, uh, with a physical transition process, with getting a job, you know, storytelling, there's art and craft and science to it, and we're going to talk about it today and how it can help, help you. Help you. Uh, first up, we got Max Suriarte. Uh, Max is a Marine infantryman who served from 2006 to 2010. Uh, while on active duty, he created what is now a cultural phenomenon. Uh, known as Terminal Lance. Uh, Terminal Lance is the most popular military webcomic in the world, uh, TerminalLance.com. Uh, he's got a book out. Uh, Max also goes to school at the California College of the Arts in Oakland. It's, uh, it's a top-rate school. He's studying animation and storyboarding. Um, he's done so well that uh, the filmmakers uh, reached out to Max, and he spent the summer working on the new David Ayer film, uh, Ten, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sam Worthington. Uh, on that film project, he was um, working on different visual, um, what do you call it? Uh, a visual, he was a visual consultant working on storyboards, designing tattoos, designing, you know, um, murals and different set pieces. Uh, pretty awesome experience. Uh, Nick Jones, our next guest, Nick Jones. Nick was born in New Jersey. i got to do a shout out because I'm from New Jersey. Uh, born in Jersey, but raised in Alabama. So two completely polar opposite places you could ever possibly be from. Um, but out comes Nick Jones. So he served in the Marines for several years before getting his start um, as an actor in 2009. And I believe that was in Battle Los Angeles. Uh, since then, Nick has acted in over 10 film productions, ranging from independent films and short films to major Hollywood productions to television productions. Uh, most recently, Nick uh, just was, uh, he portrayed a Marine sergeant, Justin Howard, on the television sitcom The Middle. Uh, the Middle stars Patricia Heaton. Uh, it was during the Thanksgiving special. I got to check it out. It was pretty cool. I got to say I know that guy. Uh, Nick is currently attending school at the New York Film Academy in Los Angeles. Uh, and he just wrote and directed his first short film, uh, Gray Hats. And finally, you've got, we've got Garrett Anderson um, and his beard. Uh, I wish I could grow a beard, but I'm still in reserve, so I can't do that. Uh, hence the bald head. I have no hair either. Um, Garrett served in the Marine Corps as a Marine infantryman. Um, when he transitioned off active duty, he started his own media production company in California, uh, specializing in uh, television commercial production. Uh, 2009, he moved to Portland, Oregon, where he did a couple of things. Started writing more. He hosted an open mic poetry night. Started writing screenplays and poetry. Uh, really kind of developed himself as a writer. Uh, and in 2010, he began to his own blog, Iraq, Afghanistan, and more, which has kind of grown. It's pretty awesome. It's grown quite well. It's now featured on Slate. Uh, it's on Doonesbury and the Business Insider. Garrett is now in post-production on his documentary film titled And Then They Came Home. Uh, this documentary film, has been, he just got one across the country filming it. Uh, the process, it was featured on every major news outlet across the country. Uh, pretty awesome. So thanks, guys, for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll get started with the first questions. I want to leave as much time as we can for people to ask questions. So... Um, we're going to go right, right down the line. How has storytelling become a pathway, you know, for your transition, whether it's as a job or vocation um, or a, a hobby? So, Max? Um, how has it helped my transition? 
I suppose uh, the the act of like writing it doesn't have to help you so much, Max. Per se. It's, it's you know you started being an artist while you were on active duty, and you mm -hmm. you know you left active duty and you you're now a civilian, and that storytelling process because you are a storyteller. You know we all are, and that that was part of your process. So how did it you know it was a pathway. Did it help you transition? Was it just it gave you a new purpose? It gave you a new career or a new focus? You know, can you describe how that process, how it meant, you know, what storytelling meant for you in your in your process? Um, I would say that uh, you know it kind of helped me take a step back and uh, and really look at the Marine Corps uh, kind of experience in a way that I think a lot of veterans probably don't do or don't get to do. Um, like you know, making the comics. Obviously, I, I write them for uh, you know humor, and I try to make people laugh. And, and you know, it's it's about entertainment essentially. But um, at the same time, I think there is a kind of cathartic element to it um, that lets me come to terms with what I went through by examining it and making and being able to laugh, to laugh about it in a way. Uh, I, I would say that um, you know, it's definitely uh, allowed me to to. To get a broader perspective on everything, I think. Cool, Nick. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, uh, I believe with me, uh, just uh, being able to to use my my personal experiences, uh, like you said, my, my first film, uh, Battle of Los Angeles. I, I played a Marine, so uh, you kind of take you kind of take those personal experiences that you that you had uh, in the Marine Corps or you know whatever branch that you that you served in, and uh, it, in my case, it kind of just adds to to the realism of, of, of the character that I'm portraying on screen, and it just gives you more life experience. It's more more stuff to pull from uh, as an actor, and you know that's how I use it uh, to really, uh, you know, tell more about a particular character. Just give them layers to the to their uh, just give them depth depth to the character. Awesome, Garrett. You got anything? Yeah, just uh, storytelling really helped me come home. I had a really hard transition when I first got back, and I didn't really know where to put a lot of things. And uh, I used writing uh, to help articulate uh, what coming home was to me in the hopes that it would help myself and other veterans. Uh, so for me, it was huge. I, I couldn't have come home successfully, I think, without uh, creativity. Yeah, you know, I, and I agree. You know, for me, it was and I kind of hit both ends of the spectrum. You know, I got off active duty, I, you know, a captain with a, I'm an infantry officer with a film degree, so kind of hard to find a job, kind of odd credentials, and uh, it was a, it was a, it was a tough transition, you know, not just you know because of the combat, but also because you know you're isolated and you're alone, and uh, I used it as a career, so I started you know as I basically started my own company, so when I couldn't get a job, I just said hey I'm going to do it for myself, and got around other Marines to to start a company, um, but just like a lot of you guys said, it kind of helps you. In that process, because you can communicate, you know, you know, it, it's kind of hard to talk to your wife or your friends or even to other people about what you went through. And you know, for me, I didn't even talk about about what I went through in Iraq. But I, you know, we did the Korean War documentary, and it's that same kind of combat experience, and I sort of process my emotions through a different vehicle. And, and you know, so now, you know, my wife and my family kind of has a better understanding of what you know I went through and what other vets have gone through, and um, it's a, it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, one one quick note on that, Nick. You know, you're you're in the Screen Actors Guild, and are there a lot of other um, combat vets who are actors? Do you know Do you know that there's a a bunch more that are in the Screen Actors Guild? I know uh, probably the most famous one right now is uh, uh, Rob Regal. Rob Regal, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and I've had the opportunity to meet him a couple of times. Uh, in fact. You were with me when we met him. When we met, ran into him again at the uh, at the HBO after party at the Emmys. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, real cool guy. And I think he's been over there two or three times. Yeah, yeah. And, and he just, I think he was the uh, the the guest of honor at the Marine Corps Marathon this past year. Yeah. Okay, so for you, for the mental and psych, and this kind of segues into the mental and psychological transition. You know, because each vet has his own sort of issue with transition, and again, sometimes it's not PTSD related, sometimes it's not combat stress related. You know, it could be just being separated, you know, from, you know, what you've ever known. You know, for for most of us, you know, we all went en enlisted, 
that's the first kind of adult experience we had for the most part. We kind of grew up in the Marine Corps and walking away from that. Whether your experience was good or bad, you know, you walk away from that. Um, whether you had a bad, bad or good experience in combat, it doesn't really matter because you're still isolated from that in a kind of a whole new world. Um, did did that? Did storytelling play a big part in that process for you? Um, and if so, was it a, a private process or a public process? Is, is back on me? Yeah, uh, we're going to go to Max. Okay. Uh, well, I think mine was pretty public of a process. Um, I think being able to write the comics and, and put them out there and show people what I did, like show people what the Marine Corps is like and just being able to, to say, this happens every day. Look at this. You know, whether it's good or bad, uh, a lot of time it's stupid or it's funny or whatever, but just being able to show that to people, um, I think really helped me, uh, you know, kind of come to terms with, with the whole experience of it. And, and for you, Max, you know, did you've got family members. We all have family members and people who, who care about us and love us and who might not understand. Did, did that help them understand you better? I, I know for me, I don't, t I don't really talk about stuff. Um, it's kind of hard to. Did you, did your comics and the stuff that you've done, did, did, did the, your family and friends look at that and get a better idea? I think so. Um, I get a lot of, I get a lot of emails uh, and and messages and stuff from people to tell me that, uh, you know, every time they try to explain something about the Marine Corps, they go and try to find a Terminal Lance comic to to represent that idea. And so I think. Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, assuming my family reads it, <laughs> which would be great if they did, I'm not sure, to be honest, but they're probably better off not reading it with all the, the penises and other unmentionables. But uh, I, I think that, I, I like to think that maybe, you know, it gives uh, people around me a better idea of kind of what I went through without me having to directly tell them or without having to get into it uh, personally anyway. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's funny because I've done that. I've shown people some of your strips and said, here, you know, I don't have to explain it. Let me show it to you. That's great. And uh, real quick note, just for all the, all the people, all the viewers, um, whether you're on YouTube or you're on the you know, Google Plus uh, in the Hangout, you, know, you can text us and send us questions and we're more than happy to answer and make comments. Um, the only thing that, you know, Nick will not take his shirt off. I know some of you are probably already uh, <laughs> typing that in there. Uh, and Garrett's not going to shave his beard, so... I was looking forward to seeing Nick without a shirt on, to be honest. You know what? That's, you know, I, I have $5 on it, but I don't think it's going to help. Okay, so, so Nick, for you, you know, in, in that transition process, you know, you, you're now, you know, honing your chops as a filmmaker, but you were, you know, you, you were acting for a bit, you know, and you've done some military roles as an actor. Did that process kind of help you, you know, in your transition because you kind of more of an extension of your service, like the kind of being sort of the same person? I don't know if that really makes sense, but... You know, how did that, you know, that storytelling process help you deal with that sort of, you know, the process? Is he muted? I was muted, sorry. There you go. <laughs> no, uh, I, I believe it made the transition a lot easier for me because, uh, for one, uh, starting out and, and, and really not even have to, you know, stretch and, and just play an extension of yourself on, on screen. So uh, it, it was huge for me to be able to get comfortable, you know, playing playing these characters that, you know, that, that I'm basically, you know, I am every day. And uh, so that, that helped a lot. Uh, uh, as far as the, uh, the process, it, it wasn't necessarily private. It started out private. And I tried to make, I tried to keep it private because, you know, I'm kind of like a shy guy uh, a lot of the times. And I remember when I had to, to go to my, my, uh, my master guns and, and, you know, request, you know, the time off and stuff like that. I remember we had kind of like this, this, uh, these get togethers that we have at the end of each week. And he was just like, yeah, he was like, uh, at the time I was corporal. He's like, yeah, you know, Corporal Jones, he's, you know, not going to be here cause he's out trying to film movies and stuff. So I was just like, man, you don't put me on blast. So, uh, <laughs> so then after that, like everybody started paying attention and, uh, and I, I guess, uh, and Mar Forez, you know, everybody started calling me Hollywood and stuff. So, it, it, it kind of got to the point to where I just kind of had to like embrace it. And then that helped too, because I was getting this attention from, from my peers. And I was just like, well, you know, I have to, I have to get used to this. So, uh, you know, it, it really helped me be more comfortable going on set, being around, you know, these big name actors that I used to watch growing up. And I'm just like, wow, you know, you're like an idol to me, you know? And, 
and uh, you know, see, seeing them in person and be, being able to work beside them and, and, and opposite them, uh, I, I really have to give a lot of credit to the Marine Corps. Just really prepare me for that. You know, whether I'm dealing with officers or, or dealing with uh, enlisted uh, members that are higher ranking than me, and then having to you know be able to tell them stuff and and, and talk to them and, and, and not be afraid to you know project and, and say what I want to say, whether you know I'm addressing them or I'm addressing uh, you know lower ranking Marines and yeah, uh, I think did, did I get off topic or did, did, am I still answering this question? No, you're I... Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you're, <laughs> you're good. I just want to. You, you got a quick comment, you know? Um, some it's pretty. This is actually pretty cool. I get to see people send this stuff. So I have, Nick is an amazing individual. I've seen him making his dreams come true. That's pretty awesome. You got some uh, fans out there. Um, thank you. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, so you know, but for so for Max and Nick, you know, your transition. I think part of the the struggle for a lot of guys is. You know, your sense of purpose. You know, you've got a purpose in the, in the Marine Corps. You know, whether you enjoyed it or not, you got up every day, you put on your uniform, you have a job to do. There's, you've got a mission in life. You know, you, when you come home, you guys already kind of knew what you wanted to do. You know, Max, you went to school. You were still doing your comic. You sort of had, that was sort of a bridge for you. Nick, same thing. You were still on active duty when you started your acting career, and then that was a bridge for you. You know, Gara, I know your story's a little different, you know, and I'd like you to touch on, you know, did you – already have storytelling in mind as a bridge, as your new sense of purpose, or, or did you find it along the way, and how did you find it? Um, I've grown up the son of a writer, uh, so I have a background with uh, uh, living that kind of lifestyle uh, through, my, through my dad. Uh, but coming back home, you know, I wrote parking tickets for four years, so you know, it's not like a, uh, I came back and became a writer and started getting paid for it or, or anything like that. I think it's more of a, the average show approach uh, to creativity. So with writing, it's always been my backbone and my crutch to be able to express myself. And uh, after I came back home uh, and it, it was so rough for me and I couldn't make sense of the world, I needed to write to tell myself why you know the world was the way it looked to me or to see how I really saw it. And that part of it uh, is is what helped. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's been there for my whole life, but it's been focused uh, on the military uh, since I decided to, to go there with the hopes that my other brothers who don't share the same uh, talent would be able to uh, uh, look at my story, uh, look what I was writing, and either relate to it or disagree with it, and we could have a conversation about what it was like to transition. Hmm. And, and just a quick note, you know, there are writing programs. Uh, you can you know go on Google and check them out, and they're like, the NYU has one. Different colleges have writing programs, and they do it fairly. Dickinson, New Jersey. There's a lot of different places that have writing programs for vets. There's stuff online. The, the Writers Guild of America. They've got a special Writers Guild Foundation that does writing programs for veterans. Um, just so for anybody thinking about writing, even if they're not sure they want to explore writing, whether it's writing a movie or just writing something for you as a way to just kind of get it off your chest. Because even even the, the act of writing it, whether you're sharing it or not. Is kind of a way to, to process that, and it is helpful. I've done that. I've written. I, I it took kind of like the, the diary and, and wrote my entire experience, but I'm probably never going to share that with anybody. But it was an it was a, an exercise for me to sort of at least kind of process it and kind of get it, try and get it out of my brain a little bit. Um, real quick question for for Max: um, Did you ever think Terminal Lance was going to get so big? Uh, I, I mean, I guess I I figured that it had the potential to become as big as it is, I think. Uh, you know, give dream, it, right? What's that? That was probably the, the dream. You, you didn't want to make a comic <laughs> that nobody would look at. Exactly. Um, I think uh, there was kind of a void uh, in the Marine Corps and the military for a comic like mine because really the, the only thing there was was like Semper Tunes at the time. And so, uh, you know, as as much as I love Gunny Wolf and what he did, you know, when I saw Semper Tunes as a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps, uh, I looked at it and I and I basically just said to myself, like, I, I know I can do this and I think I can do it better. And uh, the internet was certainly something that nobody had been taking advantage of uh, in that field, as far as the Marine Corps is concerned anyway. So uh, I think it gave me kind of a technological edge over over that. Okay, I'm going to jump off to the to the next question. Um, okay, what extra value does being a veteran, um, you know, whether you're just being in the military or being in combat, do you 
because you guys have been doing it for a while. So Garrett, you've done a couple of different things. Um, Max, you've obviously been working on this for quite a while and been very successful. Nick, you've made it into the Screen Actors Guild. You're now in film school. How has your experience, you know, in the military, helped you? You know, give personal examples of, you know, how did it help you in your storytelling, you know, careers? Uh, go ahead, Max. Oh, uh, I think um, the the ability to lose sleep every night <laughs> and 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 not freak out about it and to show up on time and to be the guy even just at school uh, you know that always has my work done that shows up on time that doesn't make excuses um, I mean those are all things I think that were kind of pounded into all of us in the Marine Corps uh, and I would say that those definitely helped me um, in terms of everything that I've been doing and, and I think that's help it's probably going to help you out too in the long run because you know the your school is actually a, it's a great school and they've got a lot of industry professionals you know guys who work at Pixar and, and different in the industry and that's a great benefit and even for regular colleges there's professors even for me I'm, I'm getting my uh, MBA at Syracuse and the professors and the alumni they talk and they know people and when you come there with that some that military discipline and you're and you're doing the hard work and you're you know the education means something to you they talk about that when you need help when you're looking for a job they kind of open up their network you know, and I think you know and it, and it makes us look like overachievers but we just we just do what we're what we were trained to do you know work hard give it 110 percent you know have integrity with what you're doing and integrity in your project but integrity with yourself and you know being true to yourself and I think that resonates and I think it's going to help you know all of you guys out when you you know continue to move forward in, in your career um, Nick, what do you got for, in terms of you know your your military experience helping you out? Uh, for me, I think it was more of uh, being able to not think that I'm too good to do anything. And uh, I, I remember when I first started the the, the whole journey of uh, trying to become an actor. Uh, my first my first first gig was uh, dressing up as Tony the Tiger at a uh, at a Walmart grand reopening, and. I remember I went to it and I was just like, man, this is messed up. Like, this isn't what I want to do. Like, I want to, I want to act. You know, this is different. And uh, but, you know, whenever I, I think back to you know my, my early days in the Marine Corps, whether it was boot camp, you know, getting sand tossed on me and sand fleas and all that good stuff, and and having the mop floors with toothbrushes and all that. I mean, like I look at that, I'm just like, you know what? You know, if I can do all of that. You know, I, I can do this, and I know that, you know, it's only the beginning of the journey, and, you know, there's it's a path, you know, and it's a bumpy road at times, but, you know, you just you stay you, you stay with it, and, you know, good things will happen. So you, so basically, it's learning how to uh, embrace the suck, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, I, I know Garrett, well, I'll let, before I go, go ahead, Garrett, what do you, what do you got? How, how has... You know your military experience, you know, kind of prepared you for, you know, life as a as a storyteller. I had a mentor of mine who was a Vietnam veteran who told me, you know, after I got out of a uh, out of the Marine Corps, uh, when I got out, uh, I looked back and said they could never send me back to Vietnam again. And I feel the same way about uh, about Iraq and obstacles in my way. Uh, they're they're just obstacles; they can be overcome. Nothing's too hard after the military. And uh, it really helped uh, give me an edge that I don't think I could have found anywhere else. That's great. You know, we're going to get to mentorship in a minute because I think that's a, a huge part of, of the process. Um, you know, for me, the, the military um, background, we're all independent guys. So, you know, even though you're, you know, you're in the Screen Actors Guild, I'm in the Producers Guild of America. You know, Max, you're going to school. You're successful. You know, you're, you've got a popular webcomic. Garrett, you've been covered in all the news. You've got your writings out, out there. You know, none of us are millionaires. We don't make a ton of money. And, you know, some of us have families. And, it, and it's, it's tough financially. It's tough physically. It's tough mentally. It's draining because, you know, there's a difference between an inside cat and an outside cat. You know, an inside cat gets fed every day. He's warm and he's happy. You know, we're all outside cats. You know, and we're struggling, you know, to survive every day. And I think that, you know, we're really good at being miserable, <laughs> especially being Marines. Uh, and I think it's that idea that we're we're so focused on the mission, we're so focused on our purpose. You know, Nick, you're so focused on being an actor and a filmmaker. You know, Max, you're so focused on being you know being an animator and a storyteller. 
you know, Garrett, same thing. You're, you're a, you know, you're kind of an all around storyteller and writer. We're so focused on that mission and that purpose in our lives that we sort of, you know, we, we look past the, the discomfort. We look past the kind of misery because I guess there's that great reward of doing what we, what we love and what we feel compelled to do. Um, I think that's for me is the biggest thing, just being able to, to be, to, to suffer and be happy at the same time. I know it sounds crazy, almost self abusive, but you know we're we're really good at it. Um, we've got a couple of questions. Um, I'm going to add one more. Um, it's there's some a veterans organization, uh, uh, vets on the hill. So I guess if we were be able to, uh, this is slightly off topic. So let's keep this in the range of storytelling. Um, do you think that the the art of storytelling, right, for veterans and veterans' issues um, can have an effect on, I guess, our political dialogue. So if you guys could, you know, go to Congress, or do you think this thing has a, you know, you telling your stories, can it impact the decisions that politicians make uh, and impact, I guess, people in general, how they view the military? Go ahead, Max. Um, I mean, I think that's kind of the goal of any storyteller is to, to – to help people see things from their point of view. Um, and I think that uh, the more the more the politicians, the more anybody can kind of get a, a, an intimate understanding of what veterans kind of go through in their daily lives uh, or, or the, the struggles that they might face. Um, I think having that personal uh, uh, interaction with, with those stories can really help anybody, I think, come to you know, a better understanding of it, whether they're a politician or not. Okay, Nick, and that question was from uh, Bill. Bill, I'm going to say, Christ. Bill Christ. I, I don't. I need glasses. I'm old. Um, go ahead, Nick. Yeah, uh, just kind of to piggyback off off what Max said. Uh, I feel like when when you know people, civilians, politicians, when when they see. Uh, the progress that we've made and, and the journey that, that we go through to uh, to accomplish our dreams and, and kind of see where we, where we start and, you know, as storytellers, we kind of bring them along the, this journey with us. Uh, I think it, it can be inspiring. Uh, it, it, can, it can really open up some eyes. Uh, I guess when it comes to the, the Capitol Hill, uh, you know, if, if, they, if, they, if they watch something that, that I do, and they're just like, oh, you know what? That, that guy was a Marine, you know? And, or, you know, that guy was in the military. He served this country. And, and then, look, he's out there, and he's, and, he's, and he's living his dreams. And, you know, and hopefully we can be, uh, you know, people that they, that they can spotlight and, and, and kind of and kind of put us out there as role models, not, not just for, uh, you know, civilians, but for, you know, our, our peers as well in the military, you know, let them know, hey, uh, if you want to get out and you want to pursue uh, something else that's how the military, you can do that. You can stay in 20, and there's always something else that you can do after that. You know, you can always, uh, you can always pursue your dreams and, and, and accomplish your goals. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually switch gears to a new viewer question real quick. I don't have a name here, but because I think this is perfect for Garrett. Um, you know, when you transitioned and you started, you know, you went back to storytelling um, or you focused on storytelling to kind of help you process, you know, because you struggled. You know, like many of us do, um, did the storytelling process and being a writer and just doing these things did it did it help you? Did it did it actually make it better? It's not that uh, it's not that it made you know anything go away per se, but it was better for me to understand that other people were out there who wanted to listen. Uh, I had a hard time understanding if people really got it or not, which I think is you know kind of an impossible thing. But it was easier for me to uh, transition home uh, uh, doing the writing. Uh, and uh, getting an email back from a buddy or something like that who said, you know, I was going through the same stuff too, but I didn't know how to say it. Uh, so, yeah, I think that helped a lot. Yeah, and, and, and real quick, I want to add to the, you know, the impact of storytelling for us. You know, the process of storytelling doesn't have to necessarily be about us and our experience. It's sort of, you know, if it's your passion, it's your purpose, and it could be, you know, doing cartoons that have nothing to do with the military. It's still helpful and still part of a, it's still a transition tool. So all the storytelling, you don't have to make movies or make comics or write poetry about your military experience. Um, you know, the storytelling is still an art and a craft that can help you. Uh, and emotions are transcendent of your experience. So it could be, you know, you're processing emotions no matter what. Um, I think when you put things out in public, it, it helps people understand what you went through. And in particular, for what, what I've, you know, what we've done with our Korean War docs, we've done the graphic novel, 
now doing the animated animation project um, for Chosen, and I think the idea is, is you can target different people. You know, I think you know Garrett, you've got a great blog, and people really respond to that. And it's but it's usually an older crowd, so the people who are sort of in the trenches, kind of fighting for veterans' benefits and fighting to make sure we're okay. You know, I think they kind of get it. There's still a lot of work to do. You know, my only concern is, you know, what about the kids and the younger generations? You know, there's kids who are now, you know, going into high school that weren't even born, you know, on 9-11. And they didn't see it. They might not understand it. You know, so what if my children, I have a one-year-old and a four-year-old boy, you know, if they decide to become a Marine or a soldier and serve in combat, who's going to be in the trenches for them fighting for their benefits and making sure that they come home? And who's going to set up the veteran network at Google? And, um, you know, this was set up by, wasn't set up by veterans, you know, and, and that's important. So I kind of, I think part of the storytelling process is to ingrain our culture and what vets kind of go through. It doesn't have to be bad. It could be, you know, but kids aren't even aware of what the difference between a soldier or a Marine is and what combat is. And because these kids are going to grow up and they're going to decide when we go to war, for what reason, where, how many, what kind of benefits we get, um, what kind of medical treatment, our voc rehab, our retirement benefits, what happens to our families. Um, they're the ones who are going to decide to donate money to a veterans charity, you know, or build a wheelchair ramp for a guy who lost his legs. Like the, the, this community that's going to, this new generation that's going to grow up, is going to be the ones taking care of the future generation of veterans. So I think it's important also to just to create some sort of awareness and connection with you know with veterans and just the regular people in general. Um, so when they grow up, they're going to make all the decisions for us. Um, okay. Let's talk about what you guys are doing next. Okay, Max, what's up? What's on what's on the plate for your new your new project? You're working on a uh, boy with a dog, right? Uh, a dog and his boy dog and is his boy. Uh, the name. Up. It's a animated short. Uh, I'm sorry. No, I told him to throw your, you. You you get a little, some sketches of that one for up. Oh, okay. Time. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a it's an animated short that I'm working on. It's about five minutes long. Uh, it's just uh, it's a really really depressing story that <laughs> I don't really want to talk about it right here, but um, it'll it'll be out in in May hopefully, uh, and it'll go up on all my stuff. So I'm working on that, and I'm also working on uh, Terminal Lance, the graphic novel, uh, which is a narrative story of uh, of the main characters of Terminal Lance, Abe and Garcia, uh, and kind of their their experience of the Marine Corps and kind of like the the struggle of, of adjusting to, to civilian life, actually. So, uh, very very in tune with this topic. <laughs> yeah, and, and you got you got your Terminal Lance book. You have the one book out, and you're working on another book, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I've got uh, Knife Hands, the the one through one hundred compilation, uh, which I worked on with you, Brian. And uh, I've also got uh, hopefully another compilation book coming out, and maybe even another one, but. Uh, uh, well, I, those are those are not set in stone right now, so we'll you know see what happens. <laughs> Mickey Jones, nice. my fan. Uh, no, that's great, and they can, they can they can kind of keep track of you, you know, via Facebook and, and on your website terminallance.com. Uh, Nick, you you're kind of doing all kinds of great stuff. What do you what do you got coming up? Uh, right now, I'm working on uh, uh, Gray Hats, which you know I, I just wrote in uh, my first uh, short short film. Uh, it's about a uh, network of computer hackers that become targets of the CIA after one of them hacks and downloads a top secret file from the CIA mainframe. And uh, it, it really just follows these, uh, well, in the, in the world of hacking, there's black hats, white hats, and gray hats. Black hats are, you know, the guys that are trying to steal your identity, your money. White hats are the guys that companies, governments hire to, you know, keep their infrastructure safe, keep out the black hats. And the gray hats are kind of like those those hackers that fall in between. You know, they, they do illegal things, they do bad things, but you know, for the most part, it's for a good cause. Kind of like the Robin Hoods of, of the hacking world. Mm. So, uh, you know, I I got the idea. I think back one of the, one of the uh, one of my favorite movies as a kid was uh, was Sneakers with uh, with Sidney Poitier, and uh, and and I've always been fascinated with the with the hacking world, and so I wanted to do something to kind of you know show these guys you know really trying to uh, you know deal with uh, corruption and, and and scandals and and, and being hunted down. So, uh, fam, uh, I think what was it? Uh, the Born, the Born movies, Identity Supremacy, and uh, yeah, like just you know, if, if that really existed, 
you know, and if, if, if a group of hackers kind of came across, you know, some type of CIA file that, that proved that that existed, you know, what would they do? Like, how, how would they deal with it? So it just kind of follows that, that storyline, that path. I think it's great. I think the best part about that, too, is, you know, every time you see a hacker on TV or the news, they're either some kind of weird kind of guy, they're overweight, or, you know, now they've got some kind of buff, awesome rock star hacker dude who can <laughs> hit people in the face. I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, it's a good change. I like it. I appreciate that. Um, Garrett, what do you got coming up? Uh, I'm working on post-production for my film, and then they came home, uh, which tells the story of uh, 12 Marines who fought on the same day in the same battle. And I wanted to demonstrate that they transitioned home 12 different ways. So I just got back from Mexico last week, tracking down uh, our old point man uh, who moved down there after his transition. Uh, he was our last uh, interview, and uh, we expect to be wrapped up by the end of January. That's great. And, and Rook, where can we follow you? Can we, can we follow your progress somewhere, Garrett? Do you have a place for us to follow you? Yeah, if you uh, look up and then they came home, uh, if you Google and then they came home, you can follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and uh, also our YouTube channel. Yep. And uh, Google Plus, too, right? And we're all yeah, Google, Google Plus as well. Yep. <laughs> um, now that we know how to do this hangout, you can come talk to Garrett all the time. I'm going to actually talk to Garrett face-to-face -face all the time now. Cool. Um, and Nick, too, I, I skipped you. Where, where can uh, people follow you can see the, the awesomeness of Nick Jones? Oh, man. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Tau, Google Plus, Google Plus, Google Plus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're going to send you a free T-shirt. Good job, Nick. I'm proud of you. <laughs> All right. We're looking at, we got, uh, I'm going to do one more question that I want to kind of let you give a chance to give these guys some advice. Uh, when you, you know, let, let leaving the service and, you know, you were isolated, not around other vets, how did you cope with that? Or did you, did it bother you not being around other Marines and other veterans to talk to? Uh, and if it, if it was an issue, you know, how did you cope with that, Max? Um, I, I don't know if I would call it an issue. I had this weird thing, though, like, after I got out of the Marines, like, I didn't like talking to, to men at school. Like, I had this thing where, like, like, I meet another dude, and I'm like, all of a sudden it becomes this, this uh, pardon the expression, a dick measuring contest immediately. And uh, so I think a way that I coped with it, or like the, because, the, you know, you come out of the Marines, it's this hyper-masculine environment, you're used to dealing with a certain kind of man, and uh, coming out of that, it, it's hard to find that again. And so I started talking to a lot more women and stuff, and it just like, actually talking to women helped me a lot more. Uh, coming out of the infantry That's than talking to, to, to non-military males. It's really weird. It's a weird thing. I don't know if that's even... I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> if, if it worked for you, you know, I give you know, anybody, everyone else, they can give it a try. <laughs> Nick, how about you? Uh, it, it, kind of, kind of. Uh, some days it was kind of weird, you know, and then some days it was cool, but you know, I, I had that bridge so I was already kind of working in the industry and stuff uh, before I got out. Uh, but the, the biggest thing I missed was, uh, you know, just just the everyday camaraderie, you know, just coming in and, you know, those people are like your family. And, and now, you know, just being out here by yourself and, you know, not getting an opportunity to see the people that you that you technically grew up with, you know, over the past, for me, for me the past uh, seven years. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of like, you know, leaving leaving home and, and going off to, to college <laughs> again so it's uh but I mean I, I, I keep in contact with those guys and it's cool and just you know checking in with them and stuff but it, it can be rough sometimes because I mean it's, it's family yeah yep and uh how about you Garrett I, you know it's you know when, when you struggle a bit you know and and I kind of went through it you know you sort of isolate yourself even more sometimes uh, how did you kind of bri bridge that gap, or you know, if it, if it even was an issue for you? That was a huge issue. Uh, I still miss my brothers every day, and hanging out with them had become normal life. And you know, after they were gone, uh, I kind of didn't know where to go with that. Uh, so I, you know, it took a. a for me, it was more extreme. It's not the same for everybody, but a couple of hospitals and uh, uh, you know, a drinking problem to get over uh, before I was able to. Uh, to, to do the real stuff that needed uh, to be done to, to move on, which uh, happened to be through writing and uh, uh, film expression. Yeah, you know, and for me, you know, I kind of cheated a little. When I started my business, I teamed up with another, another Marine, Anton Sattler, and I actually joined the Marine Corps League, and I sort of connected with other vets wherever I could, and 
So I, I've just replaced them. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, I just found other Marines and other vets, period, whether Army guys to, to hang out and talk to. Um, and there's actually a great organization in the industry called Veterans in Film and Television. I think it's VFTLA.org. Uh, uh, great website, great group of guys, all veterans, and they're all in the industry, with, whether they're composers, writers, actors, producers, directors, casting agents. You know, there are all kinds of people in there, so I suggest you know, veterans who are interested in, in, in getting being part of a community again to look up Veterans in Film and Television. They're also on Facebook. Uh, you have to do an application. Really easy, great, great organization. They're, they're anchored out of Los Angeles. I can't say enough good things about those guys and what they do for, for our community and really sort of, you know, collecting the veteran storytellers so we can help each other, you know, and find, find the resources to kind of, you know, help us succeed. Um, real quick, we've got about four minutes left. You know, real 30-second piece of advice for people looking into get to your field um, or just storytelling in general. Uh, Max? I'm um, sorry, what was the question? Well, real quick piece of advice. Words of wisdom, piece of advice. If somebody wants to be an animator or, you know, a comic, what, what can you quickly offer them as a, you know, as a, a words of wisdom? Um, just, you know, put it out there. The Internet has given everybody this, this really easy way to, to get your work out there. Um, and be consistent. Uh, work hard. Don't be afraid to stay up all night to get, to make your point. And, uh, I guess just, you know, have, have integrity in what you do. Like, if you're going to put something out there, put your name on it, stand behind it, and, uh, and don't be afraid of, uh, of pissing some people off sometimes. <laughs> well, you're definitely not afraid, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick, what you got? What's your words of wisdom? I would say just uh, try and get started. You know, while you're, while you're still in, don't, don't wait till the last minute and, and start too late. Uh, kind of start, you know, laying your tracks early um, and, and like Max said you know don't be afraid of the late nights and uh, you know and, and don't take no for an answer you know, just just keep going that's great Garrett what you got uh, come up with a plan and execute it you know how to do that as a veteran uh, just do that follow through with it and uh, you know it'll take you very very cool places yep and you know and the last thing that I've got to add is uh, it is reach out to other veterans, you know, whether it's through your school network, their alumni network, um, you know, you, you, you join the Veterans Film and Television, you get on LinkedIn, you get on Google Plus, you get on Facebook, and you find other veterans who are in the industry or doing stuff, and don't be afraid to open yourself up and talk to them and let other people help you. Uh, this is a great mentorship program, American Corporate Partnership. Um, you want to, you, you can go to VetNet on Google and you can learn how to start your own business if you want to have your own production company. Uh, you know, there's entrepreneurship boot camp for veterans with disabilities. You know, there, there, there are people and there's organizations out there to, that are willing to help you. You just got to be willing to open yourself up to do that. Um, they're, they're great, great people. Um, you know, last bit about what we're doing now, you know, for, for myself and my company. Uh, right now we, we've done the, the Chosen documentary. We've done the graphic novel. Now we're doing a animated, you know, 3D animation uh, war movie believe it or not. It's never really been done before, um, but we believe it's an important story to tell. Uh, you can check us out on Kickstarter. Um, just go to Kickstarter. You can just type in Chosin, C-H-O-S-I-N. You can learn all about it and what we're up to. Um, you know, we hire veterans. We co-produce the Veterans Day Parade, and, and I think that's really what it is. If we build this community of storytellers and we stay connected, we can hire each other. We can support each other. We can point each other in the right direction, um, you know, and so we can thrive, not just personally, but as a community, and hopefully... You know, the world all around us um, is both better off um, and, and it makes veterans in general, you know, their lives better because people are more aware of, of us and, and what we're going through and our families as well because uh, you know, we can't forget about them and all the things that they do, you know, for us standing by us. So uh, we like to thank everybody, thank all the viewers, thank everyone for asking questions. You know, Max, Nick, and Garrett, I wish you all the luck in the world. Of course, I'll be in touch with you. I'll probably talk to some of you right after this. Um, but thanks for being part of this. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, just, just pay it forward. Thank you. Thanks. Definitely. Thank you.